welcome to the channel, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison again, uh, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for stopping by to the channel. Some of you are having struggles at the moment with some decisions that you've made, some things that have happened to you uh, may have not gone your way the way that you would have liked. Uh, we'll pause and take a moment to consider what has happened, why it's happened, and hopefully be able to put ourselves in a situation where these things don't happen again. If it's crisis, if it's something that you could not predict, um, that had no reason really to happen, then we can hope that um, no further damage gets done, um, that if you need to, you go no contact immediately with that person and keep it that way if you're being abused. Uh, and get a life that's surrounding you with boundaries so that you're protected from other people's influences and manipulations and controlling which you don't want you don't want to be involved in those things because people will do it if you let them they'll run you over your life you have no idea they'll wear you out for years and you don't want that you don't want that for your life do you do you want that for your life i hope not i really hope not uh, we turn now to the Proverbs, thank you for coming by, and we're at Proverbs 2720, which is an interesting one, because not everybody believes there is a hell, and that's between them and themselves, and those who they want to influence with that stuff, but it says Sheol and Abaddon, we'll look at the reference for that, uh, it's not giving us one, it did try to give us one, goodness, Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied and so the eyes of people are never satisfied now this second part of the verse is um, variable it's a general statement based on people that cannot find a way of godly contentment godly contentment is with great gain the Bible says um, and see Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied because there's always going to be people that want to go there. Some people don't believe in Sheol and Abaddon. Some people don't believe in heaven. Some people don't believe in what Jesus did on the cross. Uh, some people don't want to believe. They, they are appalled by it. They don't want to know about it. These people find themselves uh, unfortunately choosing Sheol and Abaddon, which is a very hard choice. When you think about it, when you think that, you know, a lot of these people want help, uh, peace. I've had girlfriends that have said, I just want peace, and they've, they've created hell for themselves. And hell for me too. And no, I won't have it. I won't have that kind of thing bearing down on me. Um, Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied because people die all the time. Not everybody's going to heaven. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I'm sorry to break the bad news, um, but the only way to heaven is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Um, it's a matter of belief, isn't it? And many of you, as I keep saying, have Christian heritage and you've turned your back on it. You've stuck your nose up at it because you haven't got your way with certain things in life. You've made your choices and you expect other people to live by them. You bear your own consequences like we all do for what you've done in life, the choices that you've made. You can't live on past um, successes and past failures. You have to live in the now and the Bible says now is the time for salvation. Now is the time for salvation. Then another thing that the Bible says is the fool says there is no God. You have to be a fool to think that there is no God. And it troubles me because the Bible says the fool says there is no God. And it also says those who hate me, those who hate God, those who hate the Lord Jesus Christ, love death. So do you love death? It says in his own words, all those who hate me love death. Do you want to argue that one with him? You can if you want, but I advise you not to. The narcissist is never satisfied either. There's always going to be something for them to whinge about. I remember having a pizza night down at my 
ex-girlfriend's place. We put on a great pizza night. She loved it. We all had a great time, except for the golden child who thought that the pizza thing just wasn't good enough. But that was predictable. I knew that was going to happen. I'd already seen how all that worked. And this is why the narcissist is never satisfied. Especially the malignant one that's been pedestalized, it's mummy's little husband. Um, this kind of thing. They don't know that, you know, the dynamics of all this is just the way that life works when you allow the powers of darkness and stuff to rule your direction. You don't have boundaries in the spiritual realm without Christ, without the Holy Spirit. You don't find, where's the passage? The Lord is my shepherd, I want, I shall not want. When the Lord is not your shepherd, you're never satisfied. When the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. That's godliness. That's godly contentment with great gain. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Without the Lord, you're never satisfied. Your eyes are never satisfied. There's always something that's going to pursue you in your spirit to try and make you do something stupid. It could be a matter of unresolved. It could be a matter of not fixing something that should so easily be fixed to change the direction of your life for good. It says in Psalm 34, 9 through 10, Fear the Lord, you his people, for those who fear the Lord will lack nothing. Those who fear the Lord will lack nothing, the Bible says. So it comes down to a very serious matter of terms, doesn't it? Proverbs 30, 15 through 16, viewers, the leech has two daughters, give and give. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that never say enough. Um, bear with me. Four that never say that is enough. Let's have a look. Sheol, which is interesting because we're talking about Sheol, it's never satisfied. The barren womb, is never satisfied. Land never satisfied with water and fire that never says enough. These three things are never satisfied. And we must remember that the leech has two children, give and give. All they do is suck the life out of you. That's all they do. That's all they want to do is suck the life out of you. These are the people that are not living in the dimension of the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. They want. They're never going to be satisfied. Their eyes are never going to be satisfied. There's always something in the back of their mind that they're going to want. They can't lie down in green pastures because the pastures that they're walking in are, are, are charcoal. They're burned with the wrong fire. They're burned with the fire that destroys not a fire that breathes life. He leads me beside still waters. There's turmoil in the life of the people that don't want the Lord as their shepherd because there's something inside their sinful nature that is never, ever satisfied. The Lord restores our soul. This is something that people take for granted. They take for granted that when you know the Holy Spirit, you are able to rest in a safe place. You are led into peaceful psychological conditions. You are restored deep inside your soul where it hurts. You are guided into the paths of rightness where you will make the right choices. He will help you. He will convict you to make the right choices. For His name's sake, He wants you to have what's best for you even if you are not aware of it and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death remember death's coming it's never satisfied just like these people who live in their sinful nature are never satisfied I will fear no evil 
For the Lord my God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I, can, I have had so many issues with people that have been interferers in my business and in my personal life and in my romantic relationships and I've just had the Lord prepare the table for me on the inside. He's been there and led me and guided me and shown me what's coming and the enemies have thrown everything at it and it just ended up with a pie in their face. They throw the pie in their own face. They throw the pie in each other's faces while you just watch and then you say no more because you're you're anointed you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit and it overflows he overflows in you they don't like it that's why these people are manifesting because you have a supernatural divine advantage and goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life they're not making the right choices to experience that they're suffering they're hanging around with the spirit powers and principalities of darkness that are never satisfied and it's causing these sinful nature people to never be satisfied the satisfaction is just not there it's never going to be there it cannot be there because without the Lord it's just not going to be there because if you dwell in the house of the Lord you dwell in it forever that's the promise that you receive in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ it's not a joke many of you people know you know that you've chosen the way of Sheol and Abaddon which is never ever satisfied I've got news for you and you make it your news too it's good news the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison theologist Central Coast New South Wales Australia bye for now